Hi, everyone. I wanted to do a short explanation for you on um, some of the, of the um, terminology in the in Lab 01 on um, experiments, uh, scientific experiments. Um, if it's a controlled experiment, these are some of the um, questions that they asked you in the lab. Um, I don't think they ever used the term constant, but let me make this a pen. Okay, but there are some factors that you hold constant during your experiment. We call them variables. And then there's the independent variable and the dependent variable. And then there is what we call the control. And I noticed that the control students were getting confused with the variables that are held constant. So um, they're two different things. So I wanted to make sure that you understood, and I'm using an example of an experiment that was not in Lab 01, it's different. Um, it's one that I've used in the past. It's the European corn borer experiment. The European corn borer is an insect which damages corn crops. It bores into the corn and kills the corn. In this experiment, different corn seed varieties are tested to see if any of the varieties have a higher crop yield when infected with the European corn borer. The varieties are, number one, regular corn seed, and number two, genetically engineered seed with a gene that causes the corn to produce its own pesticide. So obviously we are thinking when we do this experiment that variety number two is going to have a higher yield because it is resistant to the European corn borer. In the rest of this example, we're going to call these varieties of corn regular and transgenic. Transgenic because the gene that produces the pesticide actually comes from a bacterium that produces its own pesticide that can it's a bacterium that can infect the European corn borer and kill it. So it has a gene that um, produces a chemical that kills the European corn borer. So we take that gene out of the bacteria and we put it into the corn seed and that makes it transgenic. All right, so I mean, this is actually a real example. Um, so you can set up your experiment several different ways, but this is just one example. We have in a lab the corn growing in pots surrounded by netting because we're going to have these corn borers and um, we don't want them to escape. So each pot is going to have its own little space and it's going to be enclosed in a, in a net. So pot number one is going to contain regular corn, no insects. Pot two will contain regular corn and a low number of insects. And then pot number three will contain regular corn and a high number of insects. Four, five, and six will be the same, except instead of regular corn, it will be transgenic corn that's planted. And I am a terrible artist, but this is my drawing of the, the experimental setup. In pot number one, you have regular corn, no insects. Pot number two, regular and low amount of insects. Pot number three is regular and a high infestation or high am amount of insects. And then four, five, and six are the transgenic variety, still with no insects, low insects, and then high insects. So the constants, the variables or the constants that we need to maintain during the experiment, um, these are factors that we keep the same during the experiment so that we can prove the results aren't due to one of these factors and instead of what we're testing. So examples of things we would keep constant, these are not called the control, but these are variables that we would keep constant. Could be the amount of light, the amount of fertilizer, amount of water, temperature of the room, amount of soil, size of the pot, etc. Um, just make sure that you understand, even though these are variables or factors that we keep constant, they're not the control. So when you have a question 
it asks you what is the control in the experiment, the positive or the negative control. These are variables that we're keeping constant, but the control is different. So let's start with, um, sometimes you are asked to identify the independent variable. The independent variable is the factor you're testing. In this case, it's the type of corn. So we are taking pots and um, one of them has no insects and one has low and one has high. So um, you, you could say that one of the variables that we're testing is also the um, whether or not there are insects, uh, there, the European corn borer is present. But really what we're testing is the type of corn seed. We want to see if that transgenic corn variety that produces its own pesticide will actually, um, in real life, will actually be resistant to the European corn borer and produce a higher yield. So that's, that's the, the primary factor that we're testing. So our independent variable is the type of corn seed. The dependent variable is what you're measuring. It's what you're measuring at the end of your experiment. And it's called dependent because it depends on the independent variable. So what we are measuring is the crop yield. And we could do that by um, after each corn plant produces one um, ear of corn, and we could just take the ear of corn and remove all of the corn kernels from the ear of corn, and um, we could weigh it. Um, that would probably be the easiest way. We could just weigh. Um, so we would our dependent variable would be measured in weight. And what we're expecting is the weight or the yield of the transgenic corn to be higher than the regular corn whenever there are insects present. Because those insects kill the corn um, when, it, when there's regular seed. So the control, the control of the experiment the control is usually a group or a sample which is not exposed to the independent variable. So if our independent variable is type of corn, the control is going to be the regular corn because we're really trying to see if the transgenic corn has um, a greater yield than the regular corn. And probably this regular seed is seed that has been planted um, and uh, farmers have used over and over and over again. So it's a control because we already know pretty much how, what the yield is going to be from um, just from nature and from past history. So the control is all the pots containing regular seed. Those would be our control group and our experiment, our experimental group would be the, all the pots containing the transgenic seed. So that is the difference between the control of the experiment and then variables that you're controlling or keeping constant. And a few other comments. You could say that pot number four and pot number one are controls as well. Let's go back to the picture. Because they have no insects, so you're showing what the yield is when there are no insects present. So they're a form of control as well. But the main control is the main, con the primary control group in this experiment are the pots that contain regular corn. Um, and now sometimes you're asked if a, for a positive or a negative control. A positive control is a setup in an experiment where you know the result is going to be positive. Um, there really isn't a positive control in this experiment because we're measuring crop yield um, and we're expecting that all of the, well, the regular corn with no insects would be a positive control um, because it, it would be a, a comparison to all the rest of the um, pots number two through six. But uh, so pot number one could be a positive control um, because we kind of know what to expect there. But in this experiment, we don't have a negative control because a negative control is set up to show what a negative result would look like. 
So, I mean, it would be silly to use this, but you could set up a pot with no seeds in it, and that would be your negative control. Now, I, I don't think anybody would really do that, you know, um, in real life, but that would be your negative control if you set up the pot with no seeds in it and kept everything else the same. Now, a good example of a negative control would be in our E. coli experiment in lab one, when, the, when you changed, in each Petri dish, you grew E. coli, but you changed the type of um, agar or gel that's used. You, in other words, you were changing the nutrients in each Petri dish. So um, the, there was one Petri dish that you just had agar, um, which is a gelatin with um, some nutrient mixed in with it. It's just a growth medium that the bacteria can grow on. But you didn't infect, you didn't actually put E. coli in that Petri dish. That was the negative control. It was the agar without E. coli. And the reason you might would do that would be to show, because um, sometimes bacteria can come through the air you know, um, you, this could show how much E. coli would grow even if you did not actually put E. coli on the dish. So in other words, the amount of E. coli that would just come simply from being exposed to the air in the lab, and that would be a good negative control. And usually with um, bacterial experiments, you do always have a Petri dish with no bacteria on it, just to simply show the growth of bacteria um, from simply the environment that you're doing your experiment in. So I hope this helps you.